Would you like to learn how to store data on your Mindstorms robot so that it is accessible with multiple programs? And what about storing data through multiple sessions of your robot so that it persists even after you turn off your robot? Well, today I'm going to show you how to use Python to access your Mindstorms file system. G'day, my name is Gary and welcome to another episode of Python for the Mindstorms Robot Inventor. Like I said, today we're going to access the file system on the Mindstorms hub by using Python file handling. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a demonstration on how this works. So we're going to start off with Tricky. So Tricky is uh, one of the default models that you can build with the Robot Inventor. And then we're going to add the color sensor and this H-shaped uh, connector. All we have to do is connect the connector onto the back of the color sensor, like so, and then attach it to the back of Tricky, like this. And then with the cable, we are putting it into port C. We'll turn on our robot. And let me show you what we are going to do. All right. So on uh, program zero, we're going to scan three different colors and that's going to get saved onto the hub's file system. Okay. And then in program one, it's going to read that file system and then um, uh, play those colors on the status light. Okay. Let's see what that does. Okay, so red, red, blue, okay. Now, we're going to read the file system and then play back the colors that we just scanned. So look carefully at this, um, uh, at the status light. Red, red, blue, see? All right, let's try that one more time just to show that I didn't program it that way. All right, let's go again. Blue, red, blue. And then I go into program one and then I press play. And then watch the status light color. Blue, red, blue. Okay. What's cool about this is that even if I turn off the robot, normally all of the information that you store in each program will just get wiped. But if I start up the program again, go into program one and then press play, blue, red, blue, okay. Looks pretty cool, right? But how did I do it? Well, uh, the answer is using Python filing ha file handling. If you're familiar with this channel, you'll notice that there's a lot of Python functionality that doesn't get translated over in the block-based coding. Um, the file handling system is an example of one of these. I spent a lot of time on this solution, so please, if this video helps you, uh, then please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's go into the coding and examine the uh, solution. So here we have our two files, file writer, which is our program zero, and file reader, which is program one. So in file writer, uh, you'll find that there are some familiarities uh, with the previous lesson in which we talked about lists. So uh, a lot of the code is very similar where we are uh, defining our color sensor, uh, we're creating a list, but the only thing different here is that we are opening a file called color file. Okay, so we said f equals open, uh, and then we name this file colorfile.txt. The second argument here is w, which stands for write. Okay, so in the writing mode, it means that we are editing this file, uh, this new file uh, from the beginning of the file. That means we are going to change the contents of this file. There are a few different um, uh, file opening modes, 
but uh, for this lesson we only care about the reading and the writing okay so we open this color file dot text um, in a writing mode after the beep we know that the program is working and then we begin to scan some colors and we're using a while loop to ensure that we only scan three different colors if the color is red then we go into the file and we write the character R, just the single character R to represent the color red. Make a beep and then we, um, we do this loop over and over again. If it is blue, then we will write the letter B. Okay. So in, in short, the file is going to be a, a very small text file that only, only contains three letters. It's either a B or an R. When we open file reader, then we will see how to read the file. So here it looks very similar to what we had before, f equals open and then colorfile.txt. But instead of a w, we're using an r. So r stands for read, uh, which is our intention to read the file. We're also creating a red string here. Uh, what that does is that's going to uh, let us store the contents of the file so that we can uh, manipulate it a little bit easier. We make a beep so that we are running the program uh, and then for uh, for the red string we're saying that it is equal to f dot read open and close a bracket. So the read method is a, uh, a method that reads the entire contents of a text file. So uh, whatever the letters are inside the read file it's going to translate it into our red string. And then the rest of it is pretty easy. We're looping through the three um, items of the string, so the three characters of the string. And then if it's a R, then we're going to turn the status light to red. If it's a B, we turn the status light to blue. And then we have a half second pause in between turning the light on uh, and then turning it off again. Okay, so that it flashes uh, in between the different colors. Okay? At the end, we close the file. Uh, which is just a good habit to have when you are uh, accessing the file system. And that's it. Super simple, but also uh, really, really helpful. If you had this code uh, for something like a first Lego league or a robot competition, you can potentially scan the different reflected light intensities of the tables uh, before running your programs and all of your programs will be able to fetch the information from those files. I hope you enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you again next time. Bye bye.